Can you hear me? Okay. So, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, my name is Giovanni Marini, and today, together with my colleague, uh, Guillermo Marquez here, we're going to present, uh, to introduce EPIC. That is um, a code which is uh, Vanier 90 based. And uh, first of all, let me take this opportunity to thank the organizers because uh, they are giving us the, this great opportunity to present in, such, uh, in front of such a great audience. And I'm really glad to have this, uh, this occasion. So uh, I will start by just illustrating you the main contributors of this uh, uh, project. That's basically pretty old actually because it started more than 10 years ago. And then it kind of uh, become bigger and bigger but never managed to get uh, a collective effort in order to be published in some way. And so um, basically we are, me, me and Guillermo have been building in the past months on top of the work of all these other researchers and professors, including uh, Jelena Sjaxte, Matteo Calandra, Gianni Profeta and Francesco Mauri, but not leave them to, the, to them, but just they are the main contributors. And we've been building a, a, a suite that uh, we think we could be useful for the community in order to compute uh, uh, electron phone interaction based properties of uh, materials. So uh, our talk is divided in three, first, three, three parts and uh, the aim is to give you just an idea of what we can do. And of course, if you may like some of these uh, capabilities, you are more than welcome to ask us for more um, explanation about them. So uh, what is EPIC? EPIC is, uh, was born as a Fortran-based open source software for the calculation of electron form based uh, interaction properties uh, from first principles. And uh, it's, uh, the main uh, ideas were laid uh, in 12 years ago in this uh, PRB by Calandra and uh, other authors. And basically the idea was uh, to exploit uh, the unitary Vanier representation in order to allow users to calculate with precision some properties that are difficult to obtain ab initio. And uh, especially because they are difficult to converge on an ab initio uh, framework. So the typical uh, workflow of a calculation done with EPIC is basically made by three steps. The first step is to preparate your calculation. And this includes the vanierization procedure of your system together with a, um, a calculation and linear response of some operator that you are interested in calculating. Then you proceed with your EPIC calculation. And this can be this will be illustrated in the, in the next slides by Guillermo. And you can analyze your results with some of the post-processing that are included in the public release. So essentially this is a, let's say this is a scheme of what we are um, proposing to you. That is, you have a generic DFT solver. Right now we just implemented for quantum espresso, but our idea is that this can be extended to other, to other ab initio softwares. And then you use uh, um, the ability to Vanier 90 to, to go to the um, real space and this smooth gauge together with the um, use of a linear, um, linear response solver that in this case is again quantum express but can be extended in order to compute uh, um, a, a generic observable that in general can also be dependent of, uh, on uh, the momentum. And this moment, this, uh, this operator that's known from a initio on a, on a grid can be calculated on a much denser grid using the fast calculation that are possible only in the one year representation. So what we want to do is basically is to calculate this observable that uh, in the most of the occasions that we will talk about today is the electron phonon uh, matrix elements. And what we, we, we managed to do is to uh, calculate them on a very dense grid and in order to calculate with more precision, the, for example, the, the spectral function that you need or whatever. So now I will leave to Guillermo for uh, some application of this. Indeed. Mm, okay. Before that, before going to the application, I would like to, uh, let's say, ex ex uh, expose some of the uh, features that we would like uh, uh, to share about this code. There is not merely 
let's say that the code is working correctly, but we would like also to show you that we try to make a, a, the, the code accessible and uh, uh, really parallelized and uh, with a structure that is modular in such a way that is easier to implement a new feature, um, uh, exploiting uh, the, 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 the interpolation or routine that is uh, common to all these uh, factor calculation that are performed inside the code. And so uh, it, this, this is uh, on, on, on the right of, of the slide, you can see uh, the, the, the main driver, the, the source code of the main driver subroutine. And as you can see, it's quite straightforward. In the first part, you have the first interpolation that a developer shouldn't care about because it's already, uh, let's say, implemented. And uh, you found uh, afterwards all the possible calculation that are already implemented. And each module is quite, uh, let's say, easy. And uh, I, know, I think it could, be, it could look uh, familiar to you because there are some alloc allocation routine, the allocation, the main driver of the calculation, and the closing part of the module. So it, it's just a, um, just a way to, to show you that it's meant to be extended, this code, and its structure is meant to, to, be access, uh, to uh, facilitate this procedure, let's say. And then let's go on, uh, to the capabilities of Epic, and in particular to one of its best, I think, uh, uh, feature that is the ability to catch, to represent the resonances uh, that uh, are um, characterizing uh, our system. Uh, I think that um, there is no, you are very familiar with this. Uh, uh, the simplest uh, uh, resonance of all, that is the case of a forced uh, 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 harmonic oscillator, in which uh, the, this is the simplest uh, uh, system in which the, the, the is characterized by its proper uh, frequency, omega zero, and is forced to move, uh, is pulled to response to an external uh, perturbation that has its own frequency omega. And uh, as you already know, maybe the, the feature that's come out and characterize this kind of response is really picked and is uh, really uh, difficult to be uh, described in, in, with a, uh, a computational simulation. As a matter of fact, we, we are dealing with crystals. So the uh, uh, characteristic frequency that we are interested to, uh, it depends on the, uh, here, you are on the left side, on the difference uh, between the uh, band structure value, eigenvalues, so that uh, in order to get the right uh, value of this uh, characteristic frequency, that is the properties I would like to uh, in probe with my perturbation, um, I need a very fine mesh on, on, on uh, both the K and Q space. And uh, moreover, I need uh, a really uh, final resolution of the uh, frequency, because if I don't match exactly the uh, characteristic frequency of my system, I don't get the, the proper uh, uh, resonance feature. So uh, an example of this, uh, uh, com this uh, feature that is really common in all the linear responses uh, function, uh, I show you the uh, adiabatic phonon frequencies that I did the, the, uh, the, how we can compute inside the EPIC the dynamical matrices and then uh, retrieve the adiabatic phonon frequencies just uh, performing the, uh, taking the eigenvalues, the square root of the eigenvalues. And uh, as you can see, this, uh, the main um, challenging aspect of this uh, computation is to compute this, uh, uh, by a uh, function. We, you, it, something is happening inside my, okay, sorry. And uh, uh, the, the, the most problematic part of this uh, function is indeed this denominator because uh, since it diverges in just uh, one point, uh, we have uh, uh, the most significant part of this uh, function that is uh, located in one point. It's very difficult to be sampled with a, a coarse mesh. And uh, as a matter of fact, I, on the left side, you have 
uh, the, the comparison with the dots that are the experimental values. And uh, for example, in this point between the, the, gap, the, the uh, value of Q between gamma and A, in this, uh, this point here, you can see that uh, if uh, uh, comparing uh, the red line, that is the Banyente folded line, uh, we achieved with EDIC, and the Fourier, the DFT uh, perform on a, a course read, uh, we see that the, uh, this divergent and non adiabatic behavior is not captured by the uh, course mesh. So it's, it's fundamental to use uh, the EDIC uh, and the Banyente uh, interpolation uh, strategy in order to catch these uh, features. And uh, indeed, uh, uh, EDIC goes beyond this approximation, goes beyond the adiabatic uh, approximation, and can perform uh, the calculation of these quantities in a really fast way also for different uh, frequency. And uh, as you can see here, the, the, we have also the problem of sampling the frequency in, uh, in a satisfying, uh, with a satisfying mesh, but the result uh, is uh, really significant. So, uh, EDIC is useful to uh, achieve that in, uh, in a very fast way. Uh, another interesting um, quantity that we compute inside EDIC, and it's interesting to be shown here, is that the, is that the one of double resonant Raman, that it seems like uh, quite an exotic uh, uh, response because it's a third order response. But uh, since uh, it's uh, characterized by its uh, third order resonances, its effects are indeed really significant and are more significant, for example, of the, uh, the uh, resonant Raman, not the double, that is uh, the first peak highlighted with a B in the picture that showed the Raman density intensity on the left. And so we here have just Raman, and here we have a double resonant Raman. So as you can see, even if it's a higher order response, uh, the, the, the effects are really uh, visible. And uh, um, indeed, uh, uh, we here have uh, the need to interpolate both the uh, G, that is the electron phonon operator, and the uh, coupling uh, with the, the dipole moment, that is the coupling with the external electromagnetic radiation. And um, it's interesting that um, to use this uh, experimental uh, measurement because it's, it is really sensitive, uh, sensible to the different, uh, uh, for example, uh, staking in the graphene multilayer. Um, okay, so now I can. Yes, I will proceed with uh, illustrating some other capabilities. Uh, besides, so this uh, so-called catching resonances part, there is also a full uh, suite equipped to um, calculate superconducting related properties was are based basically on the knowledge of the uh, electron phonon coupling matrix element. From the knowledge of these, uh, you can uh, uh, promptly calculate the phonon line width, for example, which is the basic quantity that's, that's needed to calculate the Eliasberg function. And the Eliasberg function in general gives you access to all the way to calculate uh, uh, superconducting properties of your compound. Um, for example, in the Allen lines uh, formalism or solving uh, the isotropic Eliasberg, and this is both, uh, both of those, these possibilities are implemented in the, in the code, as well as a full uh, anisotropic resolution of the Eliasberg equation. Uh, basically, you solve this coupled equation for the gap, the superconducting gap, and what you cannot obtain is something like, for example, the brilliant zone resolved, Fermi's resolved gap of a superconductor, as well as uh, for example, the tunneling conductance that you can compare with your uh, experiments per se. And um, that said, EBIC is also able to calculate, for example, excited electron lifetime, always thanks to the knowledge of electron phonon matrix elements and the possibility to interpolate them on a very fine mesh, but for uh, regarding Q and K points. What you can do is you can calculate the the leaving of excitation, for example, in semiconductors. This is the case of uh, gallium arsenide, for example, and the excitation in the L Valley and the time, uh, how much it survives due to the electron phone uh, scattering. And uh, we obtained two picoseconds, which is pretty good comparison to the experimental values ranging from 1.5 to 
2.5 picoseconds. And we also implemented the possibility to calculate uh, uh, this quantity in the presence of uh, divergence through, through the interaction um, for long range, so small q vectors. Uh, this is because uh, this is different from the from the general case, just because you have this divergent term for very small q that you need to subtract before you perform the interpolation. Then you add it back uh, in the so-called uh, Vogel uh, form, and uh, this is also implemented in Epic. So you are also able to calculate the, um, for example, a gamma gamma uh, lifetime, let's say, small q lifetime. And I will leave to Yelmo for the final remarks and some perspectives. Yeah, just to wrap up uh, all the application uh, that are already implemented, we have both uh, adiabatic and non-adiabatic phonon frequencies, the uh, possibility to compute the imaginary part, so the phonon line width, and the uh, possibility to compute the double resonant Raman, as well as the superconductive parts, so the resolution of the anisotropic migdaleria Reichberg system, and also the computation of the excited electrons lifetime. But we are still working on uh, other projects that I think will come out in a few weeks from now, I hope. That is the quasi-particle interference spectrum and the dynamical bone effective charges and also the, the optical conductivity that are needed to compute the infrared spectrum in metals. And uh, so let's thank you all for your attention. And we hope that you may find more useful information on the site. The, the, this QR code is just linked for the site, the website. And uh, if you are more old school, then we leave you our email. So please contact us. It would be beautiful if you would be. Yes, yeah, uh, also if any of you has uh, any idea on some feature that you would like to, to see implemented the app because it feels like it's compatible with what we are doing, we are more than happy to hear uh, your idea and to help you implement it in, in Epic if you want to. Thank you very much. Okay, so thank you, Guglielmo and Giovanni, for the very nice talk. Um, is the, are there any questions here in Trieste? Okay, there's Jai Moore. And in the meantime, if this is for the people connected on Zoom. If you have questions, you can start to think and maybe write it in the chat. So thank you for the talk. And you mentioned about the we have when you have frequency dependent quantities, you use some trick differential strategy, or I remember correctly. So could you explain what that is? Yes, that, that is. I go. I go. Okay. But that is a bit uh, difficult because it's there is a bit of mathematics involved. I, I use a Becker's life. I would imagine such a question indeed. And I try to mm, explain it uh, as uh, as easy as I manage, but the, the, all the results are in, published indeed in the uh, Calandra Profeta Maori articles of 2010. And uh, so the, the, the idea is, first of all, of uh, uh, representing a generic linear response function with a, a functional instead of uh, 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 a function of the density. And indeed, uh, there is a possibility to recast this portion in a, fun in a, in a functional that depends on two density. And uh, with this recasting, it's possible to, uh, to, to prove that, that this is a variation around a stationary point that is the a, a equilibrium point, the, the, the right density, induced density. Uh, point and uh, thanks to this uh, variational uh, recasting, uh, it's possible to uh, use uh, um, like, let's say inexact induced density uh, com and in such, in such a way of performing just an uh, error that is quadratic on such density. In this way, we can uh, just use the, the let's say use um, an, approx an approximated density. And uh, just leave the all the dependence on the frequency, not on the operator that de depends on the induced density, but just on this uh, denominator that is uh, uh, indeed uh, uh, describing uh, all the uh, resonances. In this way, we have uh, a response that is uh, depending on the frequency, yes, but with approximation that is, uh, and it's, it's quite uh, cheap to achieve this approximation because you have just a double counting term to be subtracted. 
or this uh, for achieve this uh, recasting in the functional form. And once you have this variational form, you find out that indeed, uh, if uh, since uh, all the dependencies is um, uh, around this uh, denominator, the if you uh, implement a differential approach, the, the difference between these two uh, uh, approximation are uh, quantities related and localized only around the Fermi energy. So in some other words, you have uh, uh, actually a uh, effective low energy Hamiltonian, let's say, and that can be easily studied with Vanier uh, without uh, uh, taking care of all the, the unoccupied bands, uh, empty band. And this way you, you can achieve a, a really accurate uh, uh, differential um, response uh, function depending on the frequency in a really cheap and control uh, approximation. If I may add to what we already said, just uh, to give you some perspective of why this is also important in the case why, when uh, you have no frequency dependence. This is also important because when you have uh, your, inter your normal procedure for interpolating dynamical matrices in, uh, in, uh, phono in linear response, what you do is basically you are interpolating uh, also long range uh, um, force constants. And those, in principle, are not good to interpolate with Fourier interpolation. So what we do is basically we subtract the non-analytic term, then we interpolate, and then we re-add it using the fast uh, algorithm that um, Eric implements. So one quick question in this slide. So is omega zero always zero, or you do you do finite frequency DFPT? Um, indeed, uh, you can choose your starting frequency uh, as well as you like so uh, it's 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 faster for you to use the omega zero is it's good or you can shoot for uh, um indeed since uh, the main problem of this uh, computation are catching the the, the requirement of having a, a really dense mesh when there is a resonances maybe your best frequency is not zero because there is a resonance in zero for example, for a metal. So you can choose, choose another frequency that is a, a, a far away that the resonance and you are able to perform a correct calculation without using a dense mesh. So maybe it's not the best choice to use the zero frequency. Thank you. Other questions? Yes, C1 here, Roxana. Yeah. Just a quick question on this slide. So uh, the last thing is the electron phonon matrix element. Are you using in this the screen squared? No. So, sorry, uh, I, I don't know if it, the, the microphone is on, but I, I, maybe I, I understood the, pers the, the, the okay. question. Yeah, my question is yeah, uh, this so, new study by. So the question Andrea is where, where is the, 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 the dressing, let's say, in the yeah. operator? Yeah. Uh, yes. And, uh, okay. Um, yes, this variational, uh, this var variational uh, formulation. Uh, okay, let's start with the usual uh, common standard uh, linear response uh, function in which only one of the two vertexes is dressed. Uh, indeed, uh, uh, this is correct, and, uh, but it's also correct to dress both vertex vertices and add uh, uh, subtracting a double counting term. And these are two correct formulation, but if you perform an approximation uh, on the induced density, so if you use uh, 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 an inexact induced density, one of the two formulation is better uh, approach because the, the, the error that you introduce uh, in this, uh, using an inexact induced density uh, affect both the double counting and the let's say double dressed term in such a way that these two error cancel out. So that in the end, the error is quadratic instead of linear. And you will find that indeed the approximation is quite better. So yes, they are, both vertices are dressed and there is an additional double count term. Other questions? Yeah, there is one. Sunisha. 
uh, so for the doubly resonant Raman, I remember from the paper by Maori and others. Um, Maybe it's like this slide or? Yeah, so you drew only like one of the diagrams, which has only one of these expressions, but I think there's like what, 144 or something diagrams if you count all of them. Yes. And then knowing the first order, there are 12, and it's important you take all 12, otherwise you get the wrong answer. So is it, did you implement all of them or only this one? Unfortunately, all of them. Unfortunately, okay. So, <laughs> so, yes. so there's because like- this a bit uh, rough in the part because- uh, there so, are... so, 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 so there's some part in the code where there's like a, this sum with a bunch of indices and then 144 variations of it with all combinations of indices. Yeah, uh, yes. Okay, <laughs> that's impressive. Uh, is there a way to automate that? To automate it? To automate generation of all those diagrams. Because, you know, experimentalists measured higher orders. If you go to like Jim Scott from Bell Labs in like 70s, they went, you know, I don't know, fourth order or something. Uh, so there are ways to do those higher ones. Um, and then, you know, who wants to <laughs> count all yeah. those diagrams? Yeah. <laughs> or maybe for some other thing. You know, it's for some just other... a computer to yeah calculation let's do the machine do it yeah i well, maybe we can think about it. yeah i don't know i don't know how to do it but maybe, the, maybe it can be implemented okay if there are no other questions i think we can thank giovanni and uh, thank you yes yeah. yeah, no, sorry um okay so now we have another contributed talk so I just oh no okay. Others, see others. <laughs> okay. Okay. Type in your uh, email address, then uh, then then you will receive an email. Can you get the. Uh, just no, just click on the button, and then you receive an email. One, two, two, or two, five. Okay, so now we have a, another talk on a very similar topic. So it's, do you, do you pronounce it Phoebe? So it's Phoebe, a collection of phonon and electron Boltzmann equation solvers. And the talk will be given by Jennifer Coulter and Andrea Cipellotti from Harvard University. Uh, yeah, so I...